Thank you, Anda. Thank you very much for remaining here or coming here. Uh, je remercie l'Agence Française de Développement pour l'invitation. I practice all day for that. <laughs> and um, the work that I'm going to present you is, it was elaborated with other of my colleagues at the research center where I work. Uh, it was a collaboration with Monica Orozco, uh, Melanie Marchand, and Roberto Vélez, and it's a work that we are still working on. And it's the relationship of social mobility, care policies, social protection, and we are looking for a new approach to sustainability. Uh, I don't know where is the control. No, no worries. And well, at uh, the Spinoza Iglesias Research Center, where I work, uh, one of the main questions of our research is how is the social mobility in Mexico? And since 2006, then, it, when it was founded at the center, uh, we, ha we know that Mexico is a country of, uh, sorry, of low social mobility. And what we have, we have found through the years is that there are circumstances beyond the control of the persons. And this is, that are decisive for the, this low social mobility. And it's being born at the bottom of the social ladder, which basically means is they were born in poor households, born in regions or a state at south of the country. And I'll explain you quickly how does that works. Mexico is a quite big country, and on the north, which is the frontier with the United States, it's basically an economy, which is an industrial economy. And at the south, it's basically an agricultural economy. And being a woman. And there are reasons that explain the barriers to the social mobility. One of them is the high inequality of opportunity that uh, in part, uh, we had the opportunity to hear about with Chico Ferreira uh, presentation yesterday. And what we may um, want to say about this the high inequality of opportunity is that those persons who were born in households with not the best conditions, or with a lot of lags, uh, at all those um, disadvantages, accumulate disadvantages, not only at, at the beginning of their lives, but throughout the, their whole life. And this is compared with those who were born in a, be, in a better conditions. The other one is the limitation of economic growth that accompany lack of social infrastructure and profitable investment in human capital. What does that mean? Basically is um, the negative relationship between uh, the economic inequality and the economic growth. And this is a graph that, as far as I remember, we can found in um, UNDP informed that it was very illustrative about this. And the duality of the labor market, the absence of social protection mechanism, and the lack of formal care schemes. And I'll explain you um, a little bit about this. In Mexico, uh, the social security uh, is a benefit that you have a, because of the conditions of your work. What does that mean? That uh, the, popu uh, the population who has a f an occupation may or may not even those occupied have social benefits because it could be because they are uh, the, co the kind of contracts that they have may be uh, do not cover that part, they are informals for one hand. And uh, this is a quite uh, complicated situation because social security, it's not only about health, it's about a lot of benefits, for example, a pension at the end of the labor life, also the access to care uh, centers for children, and the access of, uh, uh, to credit for households. So this is a very complicated situation, and if we think about that it's not, that you have to be occupied 
and then you have to have another restriction to have social security. It puts more complications to have the access to these benefits. And just to put you an example of how um, this is a big problem in Mexico, for the population who is occupied, 56% do not have access to a social security institution. So this is a problem. Why a national care system? And why we think at the Spinoza Iglesias Research Center that this could be an engine for social mobility? Uh, through the thank, sorry, thank to the, nation, the National Employment Service in Mexico, we have information about uh, women that why are the reasons that they are not working in a remunerated uh, job? No, because we know that women work at households. No, they have a lot of work and in households. And when uh, the, the responses of that question for seven to ten women who are not working in a remunerated job is because they do not have someone to take care of their children or their elders. So it's not that I, they do not want to go to work, it's just they cannot go to get a remunerated job. So what we think, we think that the absence of a national care system then increases inequality of opportunity in Mexico and then limits social mobility. Then, this affects those who give and those who receive care. Why? Because this, it limits the opportunities for the persons who cannot go to work. And then it limits the possibility to receive the appropriate care for those who have the need to receive it. And the other thing that we know is the highest cost is concentrated in women due to society, societally assigned roles. What does this mean? Because we do not have a households do not have access to care centers, they organize inside in the household about the care. And what we know is mainly women are assigned to take the third task of the households. And this uh, reflects in a non remunerated work and this reflects also in that at the end of at a certain age of their lives, they do not have access to a pension, they do not have access to benefits, and they are, they just, they are not working. It's just they are not working a remunerated job that offers them uh, those benefits. And other thing is that for those who uh, do this job in a remunerated way, those who are, uh, how does, those ones who take care of the household tasks at the households, what we know is 94% of them are women. And another scandalous uh, figure about this is that of those women that in Mexico are around 2 million of women who are, uh, who are dedicated to these services of uh, care uh, in, in Mexico, only 2% are affiliated to a social security institution. So it's, a, it's like a snowball, <laughs> I, I don't know uh, how to tell you. Okay, let's see. In this diagram, uh, we, we try to illustrate uh, what are, uh, what is, the point of not having a national car system the, and the barriers of social mobility. And then, I'm sorry for the color of the, <laughs> the squares because you cannot see, but uh, the effects of caregivers and care recipients, it's the green one. And not having, that is the situation that we are now in Mexico. We have high social costs, uh, many of them, I have talked to you about them. Uh, for those who require care in children is the inequality of development that we know for uh, many references in the literature that the development of skills at a very early years are quite, quite not, a lot of important with this situation. And for those who require special uh, care, 
I don't know, uh, persons with disabilities, sick, or elder persons that if they do not uh, have the required uh, care that they need, it's, it, it's, it's, it's particularly important. And for the caregivers, that uh, what we know is that they limit the opportunities, but also uh, the overload of the work. And I think we all live during pandemics when we remain, those who could remain at our households. The amount of tasks at, at the households, no, we know that we have to work in our regular jobs and then we have to do all the tasks of the household, no? And that's what we mean about the um, overload of work. And for those that, as I explained you a minute ago, the precariousness, the precariousness sorry, for domestic and care, no? The conditions that they have, the bad uh, job conditions they have. Uh, one that we uh, are exploring and we are working, but we know for other literature that it, that happens, is uh, characteristic uh, those who are related with the violence of women. No, for example, uh, the a severe physical discipline of violence discipline, for example, for the children. And as a whole, and not minor, is the deterioration of well-being, social, economic, the environment, and the loss of opportunity of growth. What we think at the, at the research center is that having a national care system could bring us a, a lot of opportunities for development for the caregivers, giving them the opportunity to choice for uh, different fields, for the educational, for the labor, social and political, mainly for women. Better opportunities for those who, who work in the care economy and the increase of well-being and social mobility. And what uh, we are working now is considering the environment. Because sometimes we forget that we live in a society that it sounds quite obvious, but it's not that obvious, unfortunately. And we forget that what happened to us affect others. And what happened to some place or some territory affect other territories. And it's a, we need to put the care of the, these uh, conditions into the impact of caring and the impact of good living. And what we have to think, and we have to change about our perspective, is to consider the interdependence through the environment, through the social system, through the economic system, and the impact on all the cycles in the life. Why is important to consider a sustainability? Thank you approach? Well, mainly because the environment is related to the sources available to the people. No, what, what, what happens that if we finish, I don't know, something when the people depend on agricultural fields or something like that, they do not have jobs, period. And they, well, has an impact of their well-being. And from a perspective, uh, feminist economics, that it's this uh, way of thinking, put uh, the care in the center, because without uh, the care in the center is um, the best alternative to reproduce and sustain life. And not only in human, but in social and ecological terms. And that allows us the creation of admissible conditions for all the people. And let me show you what we are exploring and we have been working. This is uh, what uh, Chico presented us uh, yesterday, uh, a little bit. We replicated this work and we based also in the work of Monroy Gomez Franco and Miles Korak, they, with, they uh, applied for Mexico. And we have uh, several variables, um, what we consider uh, like the achieved uh, variable, the uh, independent variable, uh, the social income of the individuals, and as those variables explain us that, we consider the socioeconomic level of the parents because as we are working on social mobility, we have information of the parents of our population. 
the color of skin, we have the origin neighborhood characteristics, urban location, the sex of the persons, if they have a speak a indigenous language, the origin region, as I told you, it has an impact on the condition of the persons, a available that we denominate as social protection, that is if the parents of our interviewers had social mobility, had social mobility, sorry, had a pension, access to a pension, and if in the location where our interviewers live, they have access to care centers. And a variable that we have been exploring, and that it's the waste management centers, these recycling centers, if the people have access in their locations to that. And what we, uh, more than uh, evaluating or consider what is the size of inequality of the, of at least, and in this uh, approach is the minimum uh, bound. And what we are uh, exploring is the weight of each of the conditions. And what we have for all our population, these two variables that are the current social protection and the waste manager centrals have an impact of 20%. But uh, this, all these fifth, uh, five bars sorry, that I show in this slide, it's by the conditions, the quintiles of origin of the population. And what we see is for those who are in the bottom of the distribution, these two variables have a highest impact. Even more that the socioeconomic level of the parents, which is, it's, it, it's important, but it's quite important. And I show you this, it's uh, another, um, way that we uh, measure social mobility in the center is uh, through these uh, mobility matrices. And what I, I'm showing you here is those who have origin in the first um, group, in the first quintile, and those who are, uh, has origin in the fifth quantile. And the dispo uh, disposable of waste managers center in their locations. No, and what we have here is just like, of course, we're all still exploring this. And what we have is those who are in the first quantile without these waste management centers. 60% uh, for those who were brought, uh, were born in the first group are still in the first group. And uh, those with a uh, man with manage uh, waste management centers on its 28 percent no and as we as I told you it's quite uh, complicated to arrive to the fifth uh, quantile but it's a little bit bigger that give us um, it, it's telling telling us something no um, the fifth group it's mainly a, a comparison no for those um, who, who has access to these waste, waste management centers are 58%, uh, which is a figure that it's quite similar. And I'm the last slide. What we work is that recognizing that societies require care, considering the environment is fundamental. A national care system is very important to have in Mexico for women, and a broad perspective of care implies not only caring of people, but also for the environment that affects their well-being. And I thank you very much for your attention.